Hi guys, welcome back to the Humble Gamer channel. I am the Humble Gamer and this is the second part of my journey along the Festiniog Railway. Now, last time, yesterday, as you saw it, we travelled from Port Maddock, just down here, all the way along the line to Tanib Wilk here, and this uh, and today we're going to go from Tanib Wilk to finish the route up to Blynau Festiniog, just up here. We're driving Merdin Emrys. We are ready to move once I've taken the brakes off, etc. I still love that whistle. First signal that danger denied. Have I, is the route not set up properly or something? Ah, the route is definitely not set up properly. That should change the colour of the light. It does. Okay, then away we go. Uh, as I said yes, as I said in the video last night, this route is phenomenally well detailed, and I cannot wait to see um, other areas of it because there are parts of this that are just gonna, I think, are just going to look absolutely phenomenal. Um, I cannot wait to see the great big curve, the the double back loop that they had to build. Um, there was another route originally, but um, it didn't quite go. Yeah, I think it's a fairer gradient to get to do the loop, but we'll come to that later as we have as we head out into the Welsh countryside again with this lovely double fairly locomotive. I think it's going to take us about half an hour to get to Blaenau Festiniog. I'm not sure. Um, obviously, we'll see if the track there is in place. I think I'm, I think I'm just missing an asset. I think I'm just missing a route. Um, or they haven't placed it, or... No, they would have placed it. It's, like I said like yesterday, it's Steve Ponton. His routes are very, very good. But, oh, this is lovely. This is very, very nice. And uh, what I'm talking about now is that the detailing is pretty much similar to everywhere else in the game, but it's just the painting they've done, particularly on this bit here which I think is, it, it really adds to the whole, and I know it sounds like a stupid thing to say, of course it will add to it, but it really makes it look um, very, very Welsh, um, as does the whole mountain scenery. And as I've said, at some point very, very soon, once they've released a few more of the Welsh Highland locomotives, um, we will be uh, doing the Welsh Highland line. Obviously, next week you've got some Sodor coming out. I'm still not entirely certain which route that is. Depends how much time I have to route build over the next week or so. Hold on, the dog wants to go out and escape. There you go, Bex. What do you want to do? You can go out, you can stay, it's up to you. It's giving me the most pathetic look. Oh, we're in a tunnel. I'm speeding through the tunnel. Oops, never mind. I'm not sure we'll die. I'm sure we'll be fine. Oh, this is this is a really stunning route. And if you didn't check it out yesterday, if you uh, if you haven't seen yesterday's video, obviously if you if you've come to this as your first video from this channel, please do go and check out yesterday's video. It's in the it's the one before this on the playlist number six, I think. Um, it's not the sixth video because I did my Halloween uh, train sim stuff, but. It's, num it's number six of the Workshop Roots series, although this again is technically not from the Workshop, this is from UK Train Sim, check that out in the description down below. But yes, this is... I mean, I, I cannot get over just how detailed this route is and how well put together it is. I, ca I can't get over that, I think it's... It's absolutely stunning what they've done with it. Even down to the fact that, you know, there's a fence round a road down there. Now, most people wouldn't even bother putting that in, unless that is, of course, some more railway. I don't think it is. Looking where we are. No, there's no railway down there, so it's definitely um, it's definitely a road that, you know, a lot of route builders... In fact, a lot of um, professional route builders, i.e. The, the Dovetail Game and things like that, they wouldn't put that detail in there. And I think that's what you get with these community made mods you get a lot of detail that you wouldn't normally get um, necessarily from the um, right, so this is uh, from, from the uh, main developers this, this is Cody Blythe platform it's a request halt 
I think I pronounced it right. Coidy Blythe. I haven't actually stopped anywhere near quick enough there. Sorry, in fact, I've actually stopped too quickly. There we go, that's more like it. So there's me doing my traditional job of, um, of driving on trains. Some sort of pick the passengers up, which again, I don't think we can. No, it's just marked, so I'll take a small stop here just to uh, have another look at some more of this beautiful scenery. They've re I mean, look at, look at that. You've put that in. And I guarantee you, you cannot see that from track level. What they've put in, just in case it was underneath my face, is this bit of mountainside here. It's, it's, I've used an asset like this before, but I might have actually used this asset on Sodor. It's, um, it's a flat piece of asset that just makes the grass look a bit more uh, rocky without having to paint it all the time. But you can't, there's no way you're going to see that from track level. So again, this is the amount of detail that's, that's, that's in this route. And it's an absolutely wonderful amount of detail that really makes you feel like you actually have driven the Festinion. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's the key of a simulation game. It's not just to, it's not just to simulate, obviously, the um, ability to drive a steam locomotive, which obviously this does very, very well, as you'd expect. But the ability to feel like, yes, I know this route. I could learn the Festiniog route by driving. Which, of course, is one of the problems that we had with Flight Sim. If the rumours about Flight Sim um, involved with the terrible events in America in 2001 are to be believed. Um, I don't know about that, but... Um, but this is obviously, that, as I said yesterday, it's supposed to be a very, very well... Um, well, a very, very close representation of exactly what the Festiniog line is like. So I presume they've gone along and taken videos and photos, um, and they might even live nearby, I don't know. Steve Pontin is on two Welsh routes. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Pontin is a Welsh name. Ah, oh, I love floating fences. Those are some of my favourite things when route building. Um, and they're easy to miss. They're easy to miss. <coughs> In fact, I think I had a day once where I just went round Sodor um, and just readjusted all the fences because there were so many fences and roads and walls that just suddenly went and bing! Because physics on the game is not always perfect. As we come through, we're heading towards Campbell's Down Request Halt. Which again, we will stop at, just for another quick look around because there's, there's some houses here. And there is the halt. It's one of the bigger platforms, I would say, for, one, for the halts on this game. So we'll use the natural gravity of a 1 in 88 slope. I need to adjust my route, because at the moment I'm going into the, th into, into the Duolt, into the, yeah, Duolt, ba Duolt Bay, which I don't want to go into, because I want to do the whole route. So here we are at Campbell's Down. don't know where Campbell's Down is. I mean, obviously I know it's in North Wales, but I'm not sure whereabouts on a map of North Wales it is. I'm guessing it's somewhere between Tanny Bulk and Blind Alpha Stiniog. I'm actually saying a lot of utter, utter bullshit today. There are no passengers there. But I will take this opportunity to just have again another look around. This is, I think this is a farm, isn't it? Oh, a nice allotment set up there. And uh, the farmhouse, beautifully placed. And what we'll also do is we shall sort out the route at the Duol Duolf. Um, I'm trying my best to speak Welsh. It's quite early in the morning um, for me, which means it's probably about midday. <laughs> but next stop is Duolt, and then we've got the Big Loop, which is one of the, again, one of the most famous features of the Festinio Railway, this big loop that they put in. It's basically a switchback loop. Um, very similar to what you would have seen, what you will see in the Albula route and uh, Swiss mountain routes, in fact all mountain routes, um, where it's just easy for the railway to curve back on itself, to climb. As we pull swiftly out of Campbell's Down and head towards Duacht, Duacht, I, I cannot pronounce that, I'm going to call it Duelt because that's, I know that's wrong and I know it's a bastardization of the Welsh. But I'd rather do that and offend them for being English than 
offend anyone for being an Englishman who is just doing a very poor um, Welsh pronunciation. Um, from what limited knowledge I have of Welsh, it's Duacht. But I don't claim to know the Welsh language at all. Oh, I can turn those things off as we come in to do out. There is the bridge that takes over the switchback. While we're collecting passengers from here, I will actually show you the detail of the route as we slow down. So here is Dualt. Now, like I said, I seem to remember that there was another route that they originally took that they've put the new bit in to make it easier for them, because obviously now they're carrying passengers, not just Slate. I say not just Slate. Slate was a massive industry in Wales. Are there any passengers here? There. Oh, there are passengers here. Okay, right. So while they're co while they're collecting, this is the loop. Yes, there's the other route. There it is. I knew there was one. So the new route, which was put in by the volunteers, it was rebuilt, completely new. Uh, goes round here, and that's where we're going up and round, and then through there. But this old, and then obviously, as you can see, it sort of starts to meet up with the old route. The old route had the tunnel, whereas we have a new tunnel, and it meets up. Yes, it does meet up. So, ah, that's one of the other reasons. There was a, they've obviously put a reservoir in, and there's a water treatment plant, and everything. So, that was the reason. That was one of the reasons. I'm fairly sure it was also to do with gradients. But again, let, uh, if you know the Festiniog well, check it out. Let me know and um, point me towards it in the comments. But we're now ready to go. As you can see on the map, we're going to loop over ourselves here, then through the new tunnel to Tani Grisau or Tani Grisau, and then through. Through Glan Pwyl, which is the shed at Blind Alphistinig, and then into Blind Alphistinig. So we're not far away now at all. And we shall start making our way away from Duacht. 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 I think, I think it's Duacht. Almost like Diacht, but Duacht. Um, I think. I guess I don't know Welsh. Um, I know bits about the, gr the grammar and the pronunciation, but I don't know anywhere near as much as I should do having gone to university in Wales, so yes. Right, so, just to make this clear, the original route of the actual Festiniog, when it was a slate line, went that way. And I suppose it would be an easy enough thing to do to make this route the exact original Festiniog by just... Um, taking this part of the route and changing it to that, should you wish to. But I like the idea of running along the um, the current Festiniog. This is something you can actually go and see. But I also love that idea. I love the old the, the idea that there's that there's a part of land that used to be a railway that used to be a route that people will remember doing. Uh, it's like if you if you can if you get a chance. I don't know if they have them in America, but certainly in the UK we have lots of railway walks, which are basically walks along old track beds. Obviously in America that's slightly more uh, difficult the further out of town you go, because obviously a lot of American routes went into the into the prairies and into the the wilderness that is Central America. You know where it's like you know the the train would come through. We're going back into old Western times, so not not recently, but the train would come through like once a month or once every couple of weeks. So I'm not suggesting you go out, go out and walk into the outback of America. Um, but if, if there are railway walks near you, they're often fascinating. And often you'll walk past people's houses. A lot of people have taken, a lot of people have taken the, uh, the old stations and stuff and turned them into houses. I missed another whistle point there, never mind. I seem to do that a lot. Maybe because I'm... Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm focusing on showing you guys the route as opposed to actually driving it myself properly. 
But yeah, so this is the new, the new, new route. Built by Festini Old Volunteers. Not built by professional engineers at all, although obviously they may have professional engineers um, uh, working for the volunteers, obviously. But, um, but yes, this was built by volunteers as the route was readying to be opened to the public. And it, do, it makes it a, a supposedly a slightly easier climb. And obviously if they put some industry in the middle of the old track bed. Um, I, I think it is, I think it is, it's, I think it's a dam. I think they put a dam over some of the old track bed. Um, again, I'll have to read up on it. Um, you can probably find it uh, at the Festiniog Railway website, which I'll put in the description down below. I forgot to put that in the original one. It will be in there by now. So yes, here we are. There's us on the new route, and there's the old route. Don't know why I'm pointing. There's the old route just down here. It's keeping a steady 14.8 mph, but we can go a bit fast now because the speed limit's gone up. That must have been someone's old house at some point. Th those look like wall houses. And then there's the old tunnel. That must be fun to walk through. Probably illegal to walk through. It must be fun to walk through. But again, that is not me recommending that you go and walk through it. Just saying that I reckon it would be fun to do it if it's legal. If it's legal, go and do it. If it's not, if it's not legal, find out first. If you live in Wales, find out first. Don't do it if it's illegal. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of old railway track beds are now on private land. Even the railway walks, they have to um, they've either paid or leased the land so that people can have this walk. Now we go into Mol Mer Merlwyn Tunnel. Molwyn Tunnel. Molwyn Tunnel. We'll go with Molwyn. Since I'm already making a hash of the Welsh language, I might as well just accept that I don't speak it and act like an idiot. It takes a good opportunity to jump back into the saloon at the back of the train. Lovely observation car. Which when we pull out of the tunnel, which will be very, very soon, because you cannot see a thing. I don't open the firebox to give me any light, so... Oh, there's some pipe obviously waiting for some building work to happen. Right, so we'll be coming out of the tunnel very, very soon. There it is. One thing I was going to show you on this is that they've even got the photorealistic menu, which I know is a very small detail, but actually it's the small details like that that really set aside some routes from others, and I think this stands apart from not just other community-based mods, not that any of the community-based mods I've played so far are bad, not in the slightest, but this is probably the best in terms of pure detailing um, and levels of detail. Um, but, ah, yes, so yeah, I think this is where they put a dam in for a water, I'm guessing a water treatment plant to create a reservoir, I don't know. Um, but this is my guess, because obviously that track bed, that is the track bed there, that's the old track bed, and as you can see, um, if, there's, if the water rises anymore, then, uh, well, you're not going to be able to drive a train through that unless you do a, unless you do Percy takes the plot. Uh, not Percy takes, but it's Percy's promise, isn't it? The episode of Thomas Tank Engine. And yes, yeah, so I think this this is the railway route that eventually goes into there. I think. And I think a lot of it's been reclaimed by the railway. I don't want to go too far ahead because I'm going to give away some wonderful parts of the route that we ha that we don't want to see yet. Let's open the taps a bit. Let's get us up to the 19 miles an hour. But yeah, so we're now heading towards... This is deep, dark quarry country. In fact, as you can see up there, just next to my face, that is, that is, and I know this because I've seen pictures of the area, that is a slag heap, which is basically where they put all the old rubbish from quarrying. Um, and they were... They've become now, um, now that nature has started to reclaim them, some of them actually look not beautiful, but they look, they're less of an eyesore. But if you look at photos from when they were in use, they were just big hills of, 
grey, horrible stuff. And of course, the problem was there wasn't a lot of health and safety in that sort of sense back then. And so you have the terrible accidents. Uh, and I can't remember the name of the town. Someone will remember. But um, and this is a very dark moment in Welsh mining history. There was a, a, a school that was at the bottom of one of these slag heaps, and the slag heap started to move, and it just it it was a horrible, horrible event. It took it destroyed the school and a lot um, of, of young children and teachers uh, sadly passed away in the, in the event. I will put a web, I'll put a link down to a website um, once I've done the research and found out exactly what event it was so you can read the whole story but it was it was horrible and you know these were the dangers these are the, the what you know the unforeseen oh I've got over 20 miles an hour sorry sorry ruining a very somber moment there um, but these were the dangers and still are the dangers of the unforeseen dangers of, of an industry that we that while was the lifeblood of communities for a very long time um, I need to slow down oh we're going downhill that's why I've hit that's why I've gone over 20 miles an hour but while the mining industry was the lifeblood of towns and villages and cities, in fact, um, for many parts of the UK, obviously Wales, the north of England, um, it, it was a very perilous industry and we didn't do enough to look after either the families or the, um, the remains of that industry to make them to make us and them safe uh, once we'd done away with it and you know and the, and the, the tragedy that happened in Wales and I'm pretty sure it is North Wales the tragedy that happened in North Wales um, or certainly in Wales I'll say that just so I don't offend anybody in case it's North versus Welsh but North versus South but the tragedy that happened was absolutely avoidable um, if we put the work in beforehand but um, but yes yeah, so that's a little bit of Welsh mining history and one of the sadder chapters of it um, uh, but here we are in Tani Grisial Tani Grisial uh, there's no passenger I can't pick up the passengers apparently I don't know whether it's just because I'm on the wrong side of the platform no I'm pretty sure both sides of these have animated doors, but either way, uh, our next stop, I believe, is Blynau Festiniog. It is. So it's probably been about half an hour. So I probably did split this, these videos, reasonably correctly. Don't want to put too much on because we are, of course, going downhill. Oh, don't want to apply the brakes either. Just put them in running, thank you. Which I haven't been doing all game, so God knows how much steam I've wasted. But um, but no, so going back to the beauty, the nice bits of the scenery, this is a lovely route, and they have done some fantastic work. And this is one of my favourite parts of the route, the fact that the railway goes behind the houses. Um, I've want, I've tried to basically, I've basically uh, nicked a bit of, nicked this kind of scenery idea for part of one of my narrow gauge routes on Sodor. Um, which you will see, and I will be using plenty of assets from the Festinio Railway, I think, um, as I continue to build Sodor, and you will, of course, continue to see it. And um, as I've said, there is the I, there is the intention from me to release my Sodor route in sections over the next 12 to 18 months. If you don't know what I'm talking about, my Sodor route, check out the Sodor snippets playlist in the description below. Um, I shall let it do the talking for itself because I'm very very proud of it um, as I think Steve Ponton and co should be very proud of this route it's wonderfully detailed beautifully detailed actually in places uh, and not just detailed as in the stuff they put in but detailed as in you get the I genuinely get the impression that they know this route inside out and back to front and have done everything they can to make it the most accurate they could have done and they've, they've really pulled it off they have really pulled it off as I said yesterday in yesterday's video please do go and check out um, all the links in the description below to things like uh, UK Train Sim, Digital Traction Steam Sound Supreme 
Um, you can get a lot of uh, other other third-party stuff, like a lot of a lot of GWR stuff. Like my favourite, like I the GWR 14 XX, the 042. That is made by Victory Works, who again I didn't put in the in the description yesterday, but they're in the description today. Check out Victory Works. Uh, it's www.victoryworks.blogspot.com, I think. Um, but they do some wonderful add-ons, not just DWR stuff. They do some wonderful add-ons, and they're well worth supporting these third-party developers because, as I said yesterday, they're the ones that we're going to get the really interesting stuff from. Dovetail Games will do, and um, their big third-party people will do um, the routes that the public want, which. While not interesting to me, are very interesting obviously to the people that like them. I'm not into modern era uh, railwaying really. I have no interest in running um, an Intercity 125 in Great North Eastern livery between London and Edinburgh. I want to run the Flying Scotsman between London and Edinburgh. Or, what more correctly, I want to run the little tank engines in the sidings on the route from London to Edinburgh. Um, and there are lots of classes. As I said yesterday, there was that. Uh, I think it was Peter Harvey who made the model. If you still play Microsoft Train Sim and you're a fan of interesting industrial tank engines like myself um, do go and check out um, it's, it's an L London South Western Railway 022 I think it's still there if it is I'll put it in the link in the description below it's a beautiful little locomotive very quirky very interesting and perfect if you're doing an industrial route on Microsoft train sim not on railworks it doesn't exist on railworks yet although if Peter Harvey ever watches this if you can make, if you can transfer that loco over to Railworks, I will use that thing to death. It was a lovely locomotive, absolutely lovely locomotive. Or if anyone out here, uh, if anyone watching this has that locomotive for Microsoft Train Sim, and um, can get Mr. Harvey's permission, again, please do it with permission. But if any, if anyone out there can get Mr. Harvey's permission to um, transfer it across into uh, into Railworks, I know it's not a straight transfer because obviously the two games are very very different. Um, but if you can get that then I would be utterly indebted to you because I would download it and I would link it to high heaven and back that would be all over the channel but yes now here we are coming in underneath the large slag heap outside of Blynau Festiniog that's where the quarry used to be this is this is all quarry land all slate mining I shouldn't call it a quarry it is a mine not a quarry uh, oh no, they were slate quarries, weren't they? Not, that's not. Um, but either way, as we go past the sheds here, we're now speeding. Oh well, <laughs> not very often I get to say that. <coughs> uh, legitimately, in one of these Festinio locomotives, uh, and yes, this is where the this is obviously sheds up by Blynau Festiniog, and there is the um, the mainline route, the BR route. Uh, you can just see, I think that's the BR route, isn't it? Yes, here it is. Uh, it's all this sort of stuff here, isn't it? Or am I wrong there? No, that is the BR route because there's a bridge. Um, so the BR route would run through here. I don't know why the track isn't showing up. It just isn't, apparently. Um, but we are now making our way into Blynau Festiniog, which, again, it's been about, yeah, it has been about half an hour. Half an hour, 25 minutes for us to get here, and uh, again, from what I remember of the version of this route on Train Sim, they've captured it perfectly. They've captured it absolutely perfectly. Why is my request to pass signal at danger denied? There should be no problem going into Blynau Festiniog for me. Yeah, we are actually climbing quite a lot. It's 1 in 77. Well, I've gone past the signal danger. And there's no reason for it to stop me because there's nothing in the platform. And yes, underneath this part of the bridge would be the BR route. I don't know why it's not there, why the track isn't showing up. I don't know whether I've just missed a track asset or something. It's not vital for the route, obviously, but it does add a nice little bit of detail that sadly you guys can't have because actually Blindout has a lovely station. I must be missing something. Here we go. One in two hundred and seventy-seven. Now, so it's a much, it's a much slighter slope. But this is Blynau Festiniog Station, obviously Sands BR. For which I do apologise. I don't know what my problem is. My computer's problem is with the with the BR stuff, but uh, apparently I have one. So. <laughs> 
Here we are, this is the end of it, and as you can see, lot again, lots of quarry scenery here. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a canopy. I must be missing one of the routes. I don't know why. When I looked at it yesterday, I'm pretty sure I was like, no, I've got everything, but maybe I just haven't installed something properly. Now it's time we apply the brakes. As we pull into Blynar Festiniog Station, or in a sense, because obviously it's not the full station, but anyway, let's let the passengers off, they've had a long journey. So yes, this is Blynar Festiniog, uh, part of the um, the Bala Hub route, um, which would of course disappear off down that way, and of course goes that way. I think it goes to a tunnel here, doesn't it? Yes, as it goes through the old BR route, and that's as far as the scenery goes, which is not a shock really, but... Again, we are deep inside Welsh mountain hillside um, areas here. Uh, but it's a lovely place, Blyna. Uh, like I said, they, nature has managed to reclaim all the slag heaps, which makes them look a little bit more um, passable uh, and less of an eyesore. And the Festiniog railway route finishes literally here. That's as far as the Festiniog goes. But... Um, but yes, so no. Obviously someone's just dropped something through the door, so I shall finish this off very quickly so I can go and sort it. But yes, thank you very much for watching. If you are enjoying what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Check out uh, the route in the description below. Check out obviously trains in the description below. Check out all the links in the description below. There's a lot of interesting stuff there for train sim fans and for railway history fans alike. Uh, we'll get a good shot of Mervyn Emrys at the platform to finish off. Um, but yes, so next week you'll be getting something from Soda, I'm not entirely sure what, but you'll certainly get something. So, thank you very much for watching. I was me, that was the first in your group available from UK Train Sim. Check it out in the description below on Train Simulator. Thank you very much for watching. I was me, that was that. Goodbye. So we've now made it to Harwick. Now, we were supposed to meet Henry here, but we are a little bit late. So if I show you the map, Henry is... He's long gone. I might be able to catch him along the coast railway if I... Unfortunately, ah oh, no, there he is. There's Henry moving away from from Harwick.